Welcome to the online ministry of La Jolla United Methodist Church, a congregation of faithful Christians right along the Southern California coast. Together, we seek to grow in our individual spirituality and in connected community with one another. All are invited to join in this vibrant faith community. For more information, visit our website at LaJollaUnitedMethodist.org. May you be enriched in the hearing of these words, and may you receive and enjoy God's blessing. The scripture lesson for today is from Luke chapter 23, verses 32 through 49. They also led two other criminals to be executed with Jesus. When they arrived at the place called the skull, they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. They drew lots as a way of dividing up his clothes. The people were standing around watching, but the leaders sneered at him saying, he saved others, let him save himself if he really is the Christ sent from God, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him. They came up to him offering him sour wine and saying, if you really are the king of Jews, save yourself. Also above his head was a notice for the formal charge against him. It said, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging next to Jesus insulted him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. Responding, the other criminal spoke harshly to him. Don't you fear God, saying that you, seeing that you've also been sentenced to die? We are rightly condemned for we are receiving the appropriate sentence for we for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, I assure you that today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon and the darkness covered the whole earth until about three o'clock when the sun stopped shining. Then the curtain in the sanctuary tore down the middle. Crying out in a loud voice, Jesus said, Father, unto you, to your hands I entrust my life. After he said this, he breathed for the last time. When the centurion saw what happened, he praised God saying, it's really true, this man was righteous. All the crowds who had come together to see this event returned to their homes, beating their chests after seeing what had happened. And everyone who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance observing these things. Okay, there. I know that today's scripture is a hard scripture to read, but never fear, we have a very special message for you today. 
as the newest staff members of La Jolla United Methodist Church. I'm so excited to say that AJ and Cam are going to deliver the message today and explain it to you. <laughs> April Fools. I couldn't get you on April Fools yesterday. We were too busy setting up, so I had to get you today. Okay. As their heart rates go down, I do want to say thank you so much to both of you. I really enjoy, uh, you know, uh, hanging out and joking before service. Um, I mean, working, and all of the ways that uh, that you help us here and the really good ideas you have about how to incorporate different multimedia into the services. So thank you so much, and officially welcome. Oh, yeah. You can preach the Easter s sermon. <laughs> the very first sentence of our scripture today the sentence that will usher us into the most important week of the church, the sentence to begin Holy Week is, they also led two other criminals to be executed with Jesus. Now, I know what you're thinking because I thought the same thing at first. What a downer. I mean, it's Palm Sunday. The day we wave palm branches and have a parade. The day we celebrate the humble procession of Jesus into Jerusalem. Just, what, 20 minutes ago, we sang the words, To whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. And now, we say, They also led two other criminals to be executed with Jesus. In just 20 minutes, we have remembered and experienced the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. Isn't that just like life? One day, you're being praised and everything is going your way. And the next day, you've lost everything including the praise of your friends, including the presence of your friends. That's life. And though we live in an illusion of control, in reality, we have very little control over the highs and lows of our life. We have little control over our relationships, and we certainly have no control over whether people will praise us or condemn us. Our lives are like one very long Holy Week. <laughs> Highs and lows, right? Praise and grief. Singing and crying, anger and laughter, commitment and betrayal, bread and wine, and supper with your friends. Our life is one long Holy Week. Holy Monday, tomorrow, we remember the righteous anger of Jesus as he overturned the tables in the temple and chastised leaders for their greed. Have you ever been angry about greed or injustice? And if you've ever flipped a table over, please find me after service and tell me that story. I would love to hear it. On Holy Tuesday, we remember the teachings of Jesus and his prophecy of the fall of Jerusalem. On this day, he was tested, and many people tried to use his words against him. In psychological terms, we would say the leaders tried to gaslight him. Has anyone ever done that to you? Have you ever been betrayed by an institution or has an institution ever tried to test your faith? Holy Wednesday is sometimes called Spy Wednesday. We remember the betrayal of Jesus. Have you ever betrayed someone else? 
On Monday, Thursday, we remember the Last Supper and the humility of Jesus as He washed the feet of His disciples, as He demonstrated grace, a grace outside of themselves, freely given, a grace that cannot be earned. Have you ever been given grace that you did not deserve? Do you know how to give that to others? On Good Friday, we remember the suffering and death of Jesus alongside the two other criminals. This might be a rhetorical question, but have you ever suffered? And on Holy Saturday, we remember the grief of Jesus' friends and family, of His mother. We sit in silent observance of the pain we cannot soothe. Have you ever been helpless in the midst of sorrow? And on Easter Sunday, we remember the resurrection, the renewal of life, and our responsibility as a resurrected people to be the body of Christ in the world. We are a body, a body that loves and grieves and laughs and sings and flips tables, metaphorically, and teaches and heals, and we try to get it right, and sometimes we fail, and we try again over and over in this glorious, painful, beautiful, holy life. And that is why we wave these palm branches to remember the goodness and light that was the life of Jesus, and why we read scripture that is hard to hear to remember the suffering and darkness that was the death of Jesus, because His life mirrors our own. At Christmas, we said, Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus the Christ, from His birth to His death, as flesh and spirit, He felt it all. He knew the pain of the outlaws who were crucified with him. Not only their physical pain, but also their emotional pain. The suffering that altered their minds and influenced their choices. Even on the cross, Jesus felt the pain of others and extended grace to someone living outside of respectable society. This outlaw, this criminal, didn't even ask Jesus to save him. He didn't confess all of his sins or pray for salvation. He simply asked Jesus to remember him. Exactly what Jesus asked his disciples to do at the Last Supper, when he said, do this in remembrance of me. The outlaw trusted Jesus to remember him. And his faith in the goodness and light of Christ brought comfort to his suffering and restored his soul. He was resurrected before he ever died. Jesus trusted his disciples to remember him and continue his ministry. In the suffering and darkness of the cross, he had faith in resurrection. I mean, he witnessed it right there beside him, in the form of a criminal, of an outlaw, just before he also died. Throughout Lent, we have witnessed Jesus' outreach and acceptance of the outsiders, the outcasts, and the outlaws, as told in the Gospel of Luke. We have read this gospel together via daily text messages on our phones. Isn't technology wonderful? Most of the time. We've studied together in small groups. We've had a whole sermon series. Our Lenten journey has led us to this conclusion. If an outlaw can be re renewed, and then die alongside the body of Jesus, then certainly we, as a resurrected people, the body of Christ, 
can live alongside the outlaws, the outcasts, and the outsiders. Or better yet, we can remember that the people who carry those labels have always been part of the body of Christ. Just as the person who carried the label criminal was with Christ in paradise. So as we wave our palm branches today, let us remember to also advocate for justice on Holy Monday. Let us not sing God's praises today and then forget the teachings of Jesus on Holy Tuesday. As we pray the confession today, let us remember to seek forgiveness from those we have harmed on Holy Wednesday. Let us be proud of our faith today and humble ourselves on Monday, Thursday. Let us not shout Hosanna today if we won't remember the outlaws on Good Friday. Or if we won't stand close enough to the tomb on Holy Saturday to hear the anguish of a mother's cry. And on Easter Sunday, let us not shout Alleluia if we ignore the shouting of the oppressed. Instead, let us shout it so loudly that everyone can hear, that everyone will participate, that everyone will know the saving grace of God. As our lives are a very long holy week, and each day, each season is so unpredictable. Luckily for us, Jesus has already walked that same holy path. He goes before us to show us the way through his life, death, and resurrection. To provide comfort to our suffering and to restore our souls. There may be injustice and forgetfulness, betrayal and pride in this very long holy week of life. But let us remember there is resurrection at the end. So friends, I for one cannot wait to see what this week will bring. Amen.